happened to one of these is these is the discoidal stones. You see those round stones over there. They're most likely used in games with while specific rules have not survived. It is probable that the games in involve accuracy and skill and either stopping the stone at a fixed mark or hitting an opponent's stone. Okay, so this is this is the obsidian uh, projectile points, arrowheads, as you would know them easier. And the obsidian was often favored a favored material to, uh, for making projectile points. These examples were excavated from the mission site and were most likely used as arrowheads for hunting. And this over here on the right, the broken paint pot. It's a ceramic paint pot, and it was a pre-Spanish period. This small part served as a container for, to mix pigments for ceremonies, and Kumeye would often paint their bodies and faces for decoration. Over here on the side, mm -hmm. there's a bow on the bottom, and it's just a replica, but typical of <coughs> used to hunt deer. It was just a replica of a hunting arrow. And that's a rabbit stick. It was thrown kind of like a boomerang, but it doesn't really come back to you. But it was used to kill rabbits, obviously. That's the rabbit. So this is a picture of the priest who tried to calm down the in rebel Indians who attacked the mission. San Diego de Alcala, and San Diego de Alcala was only one of 21 missions, was the only one of 21 missions to be attacked by Native Americans. On November 5th, 1775, as many as 600 Indians, Indians descended upon the mission after midnight where Padre Louis James, Padre Vincent Foster, and the nine other individuals were asleep. What happened? Perhaps began as a raid on a mission for clothing and goods, quickly developed into an open attack that sought to destroy the mission. Awakened by the attack, Padre James approached the group of Indians and greeted them by saying, Love God, my children. As the Indians conti continued to burn the mission, several Indians seized Father James and beat him to death. Pa pa Padre Louis James became California's first Christian martyr. Martyr. The next morning, the survivors from the attack collected the wounded and found Padre James' disfigured body near the river. Also killed in the attack were the blacksmith Jose Romero and a carpenter named Ursulino. So, this is an olive press and probably a was used to get the juices out That'd be the picture in the back, right? Yeah, over there, the picture. Over there, that's the olive press. It probably was used to get the juices out of the olives, and I don't know, maybe it was used for some type of medicine or mm -hmm. something, but that's most likely what it's useful. Mm -hmm. And here is a lock that had a key that was an ancient key and could be opened pretty easily because they didn't have various key styles back in the day. Mm -hmm. What's and in the back? That up, way up there, oh, that's, wow. a, that's a saw. They would use for cutting down really big trees. Two mm. people would have it. They're Probably cool. for sawing into planks, actually. Sawing logs into planks. Really? Based on the shape of that saw, yeah, probably. They would use the they would probably chop the tree down with an axe, more likely. And yeah. that back there is a plow. Mm -hmm. And you know what the plow is for. You can see an illustration yeah. of the plow being used to turn the earth being pulled by two oxen. And then it's turning very hard work. And that over there. I don't know. It's a tile flute. Yes, tile flume. The flume is a part of an elaborate water system that was built in the early 1800s to, in order to bring fresh water to the mission San Diego de So it was kind of like an aqueduct, except ancient. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is the chapel 
room, and um, this is where they probably would pray and have masses and sermons. And the um, Christian and the Indians would probably come here in with the missionaries and other people on the missions to have the sermons. Also, um, in the choir, the choir. Um, what are they called again? The choir stalls, I think. Choir stalls, um, they're uh, depicted and cut out in such a way as so that um, they would not need any nails to nail them together to make them together. Yep, yeah. and, the joints are cut so they fit perfectly yeah. together. And also, the up there, the, the throne was mm -hmm. from the 13th century. And mm -hmm. the eagle on the top of the throne was a sign of strength in the resurrection. Okay, so this is the statue in the niche of the wall of the church of St. Didicus of Alcala. He, the reason the mission was named after him is because his feast day, November 13th, is when Sebastian Visciano in 1602 discovered, well, Settled or visited this San Diego Bay, San Diego Bay, or what is now known as San Diego Bay. Over here is the some of the plants they may have harvested. Who? For, um, Who are they? Like the Kumiye Indians may have harvested for food, and some of them aren't here, but they're berries and other things. They also hunted deer, rabbits, and. Um, elk maybe so um, that they, they would have hunted that and it supplemented their diet but they couldn't get uh, vegetables and or fruits very often so ma ma mainly their diet was a meat and so um, mostly all the Indians from Southern California um, were baptized in mission so if you're a, if you have relatives or like are related to an Indian tribe, you are in Southern California. You're technically um, a mission Indian. You are classified as a mission Indian, and by the government, a federal government. Okay. So um, also um, the the why the some of the Indians that were in the mission were seduced by clothing, food, blankets, and beads that the missions offered them. Once they got in, after they got all that stuff, they were in carpentry, blacksmithing, and they were also and women earned weaving and uh, cooking. And so um, they also right away were baptized and transferred to the Christian uh, religion. And, and that this area yeah this is just um some water these are some, some bowls it from for the indians that probably lived on the mission and this hut over here is a kumie hut that was probably um this is probably just a replica though not like already built here yeah it says that le uh, local american indian yeah uh, Native American descendants built this example of the hut. Yeah, well, it used by the Kumie before it and during the mission days. After gathering and cutting the branches from the red willow trees, and they shaped the branches to make a frame, and the branches were then tied together and secured to the frame, and then smaller branches were woven into the structure to fill in the spaces. The Awer provided warmth and protection from the elements for two more people. Two or more people. Go inside. Walk around. Show all. Yeah. You can see. I really don't know what a willow tree looks like, but obviously this is what a willow tree looks like. And this is the hut that they would use. It was probably had more branches weaved through it because, as you can see, there's a lot of spaces there, and you see the structural frame over here, down here. And if you see the bigger branches lying around the, the inside of the hut. And the outside. Yeah, and the outside. So that would make the structure of the hut. 
and then the brush and uh, smaller branches were weaved through, as I said, to make um, protection for the elephants. Okay, so this is a mapape, sort of like a mortar and pestle, and um, it was used to grind up maize and acorns and other grains um, to make flour, to make bread, and tortillas. Okay, so this is the fountain instructed by the Spanish, made out of granite, in reminder of the first California aqueduct from Mission Gorge to all the way to the mission. Okay, so the, this here, this building, is the rectory, or the house of the pastor, that teaches the over 2,000 families that go to this church.